Today on Beerus TV, we're gonna find out if light diffusers have a place in reefing. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beerus TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, and what the manuals are missing with a focus on putting them to the test. Then rate that theory based on our scale of reef certainty to reef fantasy. This week we're going to find out if Kessel's new diffusion kits live up to their claims. These are small magnetic white lenses which snap onto the AP700 and claim to reduce shimmer, improve shading or improve spread, enrich color blending, and I know everyone's wondering what impact they'll have on overall par. If these simple lenses can bring it home in all these claims, I think it's going to really shake up how many of us approach lighting our reef tanks. Proper blending, insane flicker or disco ball effects, and shading from single points of light are the biggest challenges LED lighting and reef tanks face. Solving all of those issues would be a huge deal, so let's put those claims to the test. Let's get right to it. First thing we'd like to put to the test is enriched color blending, specifically referenced as superior color mixing. This is something that all LEDs struggle with. With halide and T5 lighting, the bulbs emit a wide spectrum that can cover anything from UV to blue, green, orange, red, all within the same bulb. With LED lighting, each LED generally hits a very narrow spectrum peak. To create a full spectrum lighting source, you need to use a whole array of different LED colors, which peak at different points, and then blend them together to create a full spectrum light source. There are a variety of different ways to do this, but the most common is probably to create small clusters of LEDs, which are packed fairly close together with or without lenses, and hopefully the color or light of each individual LED will intersect with each other and create that blended spectrum of light that we're looking for. However, the placement of each individual color LED and reflector or lens will impact that spread or blending of the individual spectrums. We've tested this on a variety of lights in air and water, and it works to various degrees, but there's almost always some level of spectrum hotspots. In air, we use a spectrometer to get the color spectrum at nine points in a two-foot grid at a few heights. This is an example of a typical cluster of LEDs that doesn't use a lens a foot above the sensor. You can see there are pretty major changes in spectrum at each measuring point. Same with a typical cluster of LEDs that do use lenses. In fact, I would say in this case, the spectrum hotspots with lenses are a bit more pronounced. I share these because color blending is one of those things that Kessel's always claimed to do particularly well without the diffusion lenses. Their approach is what they call a dense matrix array where they pack all of the LEDs under a single lens, which in theory will blend all the colors together into a single blended spectrum without all the spectrum hotspots. We put that to the test with the spectrometer and I have to say the shifts in spectrum at the nine different locations in the two foot grid are significantly less dramatic, but still not perfect. We threw this light diffusion kit on and repeated the test. Sure enough, the results are pretty impressive. The changes in spectrum are amazingly subtle between all nine points. Same could be said of the major diffusion kit. This time the improvement is a bit more subtle, but the spectrum is extremely uniform on all points. We also like to test spectrum in water because water and ripples serve as their own type of lens and changes how the light behaves. Because it's difficult to measure spectrum under water and it changes rapidly, we're just looking for visual cues in a pretty extreme environment where it's easy for the human eye to see significant issues, which is a white background in a shallow tank with a lot of flow and surface agitation. Again, for reference point, this is what some of the most common LED clusters look like with and without lenses in this environment. You can see rather than the optimal blend of spectrums that we're looking for, it's pretty typical for the ripples in the surface of the water to act as their own lenses and shoot individual spectrums or colors all over. How impactful that is is largely based on how many ripples or lenses you create with your tank's flow patterns. You can see if I reduce the ripples in the water, the impact on color or spectrum separation is reduced as well. At least to the human eye, the blending seems to be better. I guess how it's reaching the coral and how it impacts the coral's health is up to some debate. Most of you certainly won't be able to catch this with the human eye in a multicolored background like a standard aquascape, and by the time it reaches the bottom of a two-foot tank, the colors are blended better in the sand. However, many of you might be able to see this impact on the back of the tank, where you can see the individual beams of the spectrum dancing around the back of the tank like fire. So this is how the castle performs in a pretty extreme environment with a tremendous amount of flow and surface ripples, shallow tank, and white background. Similar to the spectrum test in the air we did a minute ago, you can see that putting all the LEDs under a single lens is a significant improvement and already it performs pretty well in this regard. So how well do the diffusion kits work? 
After snapping on the diffusion kit, I would call the single diffusion kit almost perfect. I don't see any random bits of color dancing around the tank, and all the individual color LEDs seem to be blended flawlessly into a more complete spectrum of light. Snapping on the major diffusion kit has a very similar impact, and to my eye, even looks a bit better, but honestly, it's hard to tell the difference, and I may only think it looks better because it says the word major on it. All in all, I have to say the frosted diffusion kits are achieving the claim of better spectrum blending, both as tested by the spectrometer as well as visually. Similar to that is the claim of reduced shimmer. One of the perceived drawbacks of LEDs is a pretty overwhelming volume of shimmer, which is commonly referred to as a disco ball effect that can range from a slightly annoying flicker to the disco ball effect, all the way to what I would call a static TV effect, which is obviously less desirable. There's no way around it, the more individual LEDs or lenses you use, the more the shimmer will transition into an annoying flicker. Once more, Kessel's already well known for having arguably the best shimmer effect of any LED on the market because of that dense matrix array under a single lens. But that's still too much shimmer for many people, and I'll admit that I'm one of those people, and why I prefer to soften the shimmer by supplementing with T5 lighting in most cases. So we already saw the shimmer in the most extreme environments when we looked at spectrum. This time I'd like to look at them in the BRS 160. We turned on just a single AP700 and turned off the T5s. This is what the shimmer looks like on average. The flow is variable in this tank, so it won't always look the same. But if you're paying close attention to this tank, it's probably more shimmer than most people would like. So how do the diffusion kits look? Well, the slight diffusion's absolutely softening the shimmer lines and making the effect less dramatic, something probably best seen side by side. I think most people would agree the diffuse version of shimmer is more appealing. Again, the major diffusion seems to be a minimal improvement to me over the slight diffusion, but I'll let you decide. Again, I'm gonna have to say that the Kessel's claim of reduced shimmer is accurate. The third claim is reduced shading, specifically diffusing the light to reduce intensity or par hotspots and spreading out the light more evenly at shallower angles, which is especially good for branching species of coral like SPS. The easiest way to test the spread in hotspots is just to set up a par grid with and without the diffusion lenses. We'll do that by taking a quick look at the average of a center 6-inch ring, middle 18-inch ring, and outer 30-inch ring with no diffusion as well as slight and major diffusion kits at multiple depths. With the light six inches above the tank and at a depth of six inches, we saw an average par in the center six inches of 347. The middle 18 inch ring had a par of 194, which is a 44% drop off, and the outside 30 inch ring had a par of 88, which is a 54% drop off from the middle 18 inch ring. These results are pretty typical of the measurements taken at shallow depths with LEDs, which have compact pucks or light sources, where the par will always be the highest, where the two light sources intersect in the center. At a depth of 12 inches, that evens out pretty dramatically with an average par of 220 in the center, 6 inches, 170 in the middle 18 inch ring, which is only a difference of 22%, 122 in the outer 30 inches, and a drop off of only 28%. Overall, I wouldn't define this as a significant hot spot because the fall off is pretty even over a 30 inch spread. At a depth of 18 inches, we're seeing an average par in each ring of 163, 157, and 127, which is a fall off just shy of 4 and 13% from the center. This is what I would call pretty flat lighting and it's going to be hard to improve on. So let's try this slight diffusion kit, which at six inches deep had par readings of 220, 127, and 61 respectively. This equated to a fall off of 42% in the middle ring and 51, which is better than the 44 and 54% fall off without the diffusion kits, but just barely. You will, however, notice the significant drop in par, which we'll cover in just a moment. At 12 inches deep, we saw 154, 114, and 81, which was a fall off of 25 and 28%, which is almost the same percentage as no diffusion kit, but the fall off of the middle 18 inch ring was actually slightly higher. At 18 inches deep, we saw par levels of 114, 107, and 96 in the respective rings, which was a drop off of 6 and 10%. Again, very similar fall off to the no diffusion by percentage. I'll save the suspense, and other than a minuscule reduction in par, the major diffusion kit also had the same fall off of 41 and 48% at 6 inches, 23 and 24% at 12 inches, and 5 and 14% at 18 inches deep. In this case, I have to say that it's my opinion, Kessel's diffusion kits did not live up to the claim that they're providing better spread, and based on these numbers, I don't see how it could provide a significant improvement on the impact of shading. We also saw a pretty sizable impact on the par output, which is the next point. 
In relation to par, we just took an average of all 36 par measurement points at all three depths, which is 108 points. With no diffusion kit, the AP700 had an average 108 point par of 149, with a slight diffusion kit an average of 99 and 94 with a major diffusion lens, which means the lens has resulted in a 33 and 36 percent reduction in par. So in a rating of reef fantasy to reef certainty, and the three major claims of enriched color blending, reduced shimmer, and reduced shading or improved spread, I'm going to give this a 6.6. Two elements are pretty much a certainty with improvements on shimmer and spectrum, but the spread or shading claim was a fantasy in my eyes. The PAR reduction is obviously going to play a big role here, and some of you might not be interested in these diffusion kits because of the 30th percent reduction in PAR output. I will say based on these results, we decided to throw the major diffusion kits on the BRS-160 because we only run the Kessels at 30% anyways. The improved shimmer and color blending is worth a relatively small increase in power consumption by turning them up to somewhere between 40 and 50%. That wraps up today's BRS TV Investigates. In this week's poll, we're going to do something a bit different and ask all of you, what do you think about the topic of next week's episode? The Philips Coral Care LED module, everything that you ever wanted from a reefing LED or just more reefing trash? Tell us what you think. If you have an idea of a popular reefing theory, product, or method that you would like to see us put to the test, let us know in the comments area down below and we'll add it to the list. If you like what we're doing and want to see more, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. See you in the next episode where we explore the Philips Coral Care 